All right, so all we're doing is saying if a function is continuous, it has an integral. Yeah, I'm recording. Jeez. If a function is continuous, it is an integral. It is integratable, rather. So, for example, we have this green, crazy-looking curve. Is that green, crazy-looking curve continuous? Yes. We are given that the area under this curve is 3, and the area from this curve to the line is 7. So what we can do is we can talk about some of the different aspects of this curve. So what we could do is we could say, all right, what is the integral from 0 to c of f of x dx equal to? Yeah, perfect. What would the integral from c to b of f of x dx be equal to? Negative. Exactly. So everything's below the curve. So even though area is inherently positive, an integral takes on the sign. So it would be negative 7. Then the idea is that, do you see how this goes 0 to c and this goes c to b? So since the top matches the bottom, what we can do is we can come up with this idea where it goes 0 to c of f of x dx plus c to b of f of x dx and say that that's equal to 0 to b. So like you kind of can cancel out the c terms of f of x dx and that would be equal to the 3 minus the 7. That's pretty much the sum or theory of today. You can take a top and a bottom, add them together, and come up with a whole. So, for example, we have the integral from negative 1 to 3 of 1 half x minus 1. So what we're going to do is kind of picture this once again as an area of the lines between those two points. So, when x is negative 1, negative 1 times a half is negative 1, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 1 and a half. At x equals 0, we're at negative 1. At x equals 1, we would be at negative a half. And at x equals 2, 2 times a half is 1, 1 minus 1 be 0, and then x equals 3, we'd be at a half again. So what you'll notice is we have this linear aspect, so slope of 1 half, down by 1, and what we're going to do is we're going to find the areas between those two curves made with the x-axis. So what shape do we have for the area down below? Yeah, it's even just one big triangle, right? So that would be breaking this integral up to negative 1. Where does it intersect the x-axis? So it would be negative 1 to 2 of 1 half x minus 1 dx. So to find that, we find the area of the triangle. So the area of the triangle is 1 half. The base, so this had a height of 1 and a half. The height, so it went 1, 2, 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. A half times a half is 4. It's hard to say, so this is 9 fourths. Yep. But because everything is below, it's really negative. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add to it this little triangle here, which is from 2 to to 3. So that's 1 half again. Base is 1. Height a half. So a half times a half is a... So you add the two total areas together and the integral would equal negative 9 fourths plus a fourth, which is negative 8 fourths, which is Is 
See, not terrible. Lots and lots of triangles again. Let's look at another example. So, same idea, but now we have a curve that's shifted up three and a slope of one half again. Okay, so y-intercept at zero three goes up one over two, up one over two, down one, up two, down one over two. So what big shape do we have? Yeah, so if you didn't see the trapezoid, what other shape could you kind of create? Yeah, so you have two choices as to how you want to see this. It could either be one big trapezoid or you could see it as a triangle and a rectangle. I personally saw it as the trapezoid because a trapezoid means I only have to do one area. So what I'm going to do is do the area underneath this curve. So I'm going to do the area of this whole region. In order to treat this like a trapezoid, what do I need to know? Yeah, I need to know the bases and the height of the trapezoid. So again, all of our trapezoids for area are kind of turned on their sides. So the base is here, a base is down here, and the height is the distance on the x's. So the distance on the x's goes from negative 3 to positive 3, so that means it has a height of 6. So our area would be 1 half, a height of 6, and then the heights of the bases. So when it is negative 3, the height of the curve is at 3 halves, or 1.5. When it's at positive 3, the height of the curve is at five halves or 2.5. So you have three halves. So five and a half. Okay. So add those together. Would you five halves? Nice. It should nice. be nine, nine halves. That's yeah. what I said. I was like, can't find my triangle. So 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6 times 6 is 36 divided by 2. What type of shape is that? Yeah, it's a circle, and then the negative 3 shifts it So that means the origin of the circle is at negative 3. The 4 is the radius squared, so that means this is a circle of radius 2. So it's going from here and then up 2. So at 2 would be at negative 3, and at negative 2, he would also be at 3. That's why they picked negative 2. Wow, that's not a super bad. Here's where it's tricky. Yeah, I'm not finding the area inside the circle. I'm finding the area from the x-axis to the circle. So this almost goes back, and you'll probably remember doing it, where you used to have like shaded regions with shapes inside them, and then you subtracted like the area of one to the other. So what we're going to do is we want to find this shaded region here. 
So what we're going to treat it like is a big rectangle. So you have a big rectangle. And we're going to subtract away the area of the semicircle. Okay? So the area of the rectangle is base times height. So this is how far apart? So the area of the rectangle would be a 4 by 3. And then the area of the circle is only half of it. So we have the area of a semicircle. So it's half pi r squared. So we said it was a radius of 2. So the area of the circle region would be 2 pi. So I want you to take the rectangle minus the circle to find the thing. So it would be like 12 minus Now, that is talking inherently about area. How can I make that reflect the idea that this rectangle is below the x-axis? Yeah, so this would have to be a negative 12. Exactly, and then it's going to turn to a positive 2 pi because it's like minus a minus. So truly, the integral would be negative 12 plus 2 pi. So it's like the opposite because it's below. Does that make sense? Okay. And the inherently generic AB3 alpha. When we do these, what we're doing is we're essentially just finding equations of a line. If this said 3x instead of 3 theta, what type of equation would you imagine? A line of slope 3. So it would go through the origin, go up 3, over 1, and down 3, over 1. Sorry, I just don't have space. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're so pretty. Okay, if I name this generic first point A and the generic second point B, A, if you plug A into the equation, would be at a height of? Yeah. You put B in, B would be at a height of 3B. So this shape then would become what? Yep. So the area would be one half. The height would be the distance from A to B. Since I don't know what that is as a number, I have to take B minus a, because I want to get rid of this space here. And then we add our base heights, so it would be 3a plus 3b. Can't really clean that up a whole lot. I mean, you could foil it and get squares and this and that, so let's do that. So you get 3AB plus 3B squared 
minus 3a squared minus 3b8. So, cancel. And then divide by the factor. Okay, homework will be in the book. We already did some of these. Let's see what we have again. We did the 25. I believe you can do 13 to 21. Um, We did, did we do 35 and 37? We did 35. Yeah, 35. So we didn't do 33? We did 33 and 35. Okay, we did 33 and 35, so we didn't do 37. Yep. So I'm going to 